Hello and welcome to today's cryptocurrency technical analysis where we are going to be diving into the Bitcoin charts together and going through the current trading setup that we have ongoing as well as looking at some of the really key and important levels that really one must be aware of right now. So ladies and gentlemen, I really hope that you love this episode. I'm really going to love presenting it. So without further said or do, smash the likes and let's get into the charts. So as you all know, uh, this was two or three days ago now. I was obviously making a urgent video for you all, explaining to you all, and this is while we were looking at this price action, of why I was waiting for lower. Okay, and if we add on what we were looking at at the time, it was obviously this falling wedge type pattern. Okay, and this, I think today's episode is really, you know, how you get into the mind of, you know, somebody that knows how the market makers work okay i know for a fact bitcoin is literally designed or not, or not designed per se this is not the core design of bitcoin but i know how the exchanges work and the exchanges run the market and this this market currently is literally you know programmed to wreck the majority of people let's just say that okay can't talk about it too much but it's pretty much designed to wreck the majority of people and so what were we aware of a few days ago we were aware of a few things okay firstly consolidation above support as we know is bearish okay and we also knew that there was the public pattern that everybody loves the falling wedge which again is considered bullish but of course you know we we obviously all know when everybody's looking at a pattern it's probably not going to work out is it okay so there was a few things of why we were expecting lower and um, obviously in that stream i pretty much told you all where i think what the i set up that you know, everybody is looking at, okay? And what everybody is looking at is probably not going to work out, is it? And so we were obviously talking about this, uh, what people would be thinking at the time, okay? Okay, I have a long hair off of a falling wedge. Let's place the stop loss, have a guess where, below $30,000. Oh yeah, this will be safe, won't it? <laughs> long hair, long to fall no wedge, stop loss below 30K, off to the moon we go with the grayscale uh, pumps and all this good stuff that people love to talk about. As we all know, this was very, very, very unlikely. And in fact, as you all know by now, we did get the move down. We did get the move down. We finally hit that $30,000 level, which you know I've been waiting for. That is one I have been waiting for. And we had the fake out. So there's a few things that you have to remember at this moment in time. What's going on? Okay, what's going on when we've had this breach to the downside? Well, there's a few different factors here. First of all, everybody that had longed you know, this setup where, you know, after this, I was like, just dump it and take the stop losses, please. Come on. <laughs> There's just no way this is going to work out good for the longs. And it didn't. So obviously we, we did get that move to the downside. We did breach $30,000 and we did basically stop out all the premature longs. If you saw the liquidations, it was crazy. Yeah. Lots of people got wrecked on that move down. And I don't mean this in a bad way. You know, I'm just talking facts, high cold facts of this is, you know, just how the market's moving. So yeah, a lot of people got wrecked on that drop. So what happens here? We're hovering down below $30,000 a level. We've been waiting for for quite a while. And I will stress this in my last Champions live stream. The whole trade of the week setup that I gave was based off of Bitcoin moving down below $30,000. And that trade of the week setup is currently in place. So if you're a Champion member, go watch Sunday's live stream because we're literally in the long right now. So with that said, moving on swiftly, we had longs getting wrecked. We had a second group of people which are shorting the lows, which I just think is the worst idea. You do not short the range low. This is just like suicide, but people still do it nevertheless. So you had long premature longs getting stopped out. You had shorts just barbarically shorting <laughs> the lows. And the second, you know, the last group of people are, are people that are sat on the sidelines. You know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say that's a bad thing, but you obviously you do naturally have a group of people that are a bit, you know, taken aback by it, unsure what to do, you know, some people expecting lower, some people just, you know, not willing to trade the price action, which is, you know, that's respect it's respectful. It's better than shorting support. We'll just say that. So you have a you know three main groups of people that are really kind of losing on this, and then you have the last group, which is you know willing to jump in front of this. Of course, you could say this is hero mode almost, but willing to step in front of this, hold up, and you know we can all see the reaction that we've got off of this. 
you know, what could have been what some of the most, you know, influential reasons here? Well, obviously, I think the number one reason is the simple fact of the fake out of $30,000, okay? And well, there was obviously a few setups that you had down here for potential longs. Number one is obviously a swing failure pattern. And if you miss the swing failure pattern down here, then the second and really, I think the last opportunity would have been taking your fib from the low, okay, up to the high, and you will see you really come into the CC, okay? So yeah, I mean, these setups are not for everybody, I'm not gonna lie, but they're, they're there for some people. So you had either a swing failure pattern trade or you had the option of, you know, a CC type, type setup, okay? And I think both of those, you know, are acceptable trades. And obviously off the back of that, we've had a pretty substantial rise to the upside. As I mentioned at the start of the video, I personally am in a long and I, and I did write this in my champions group yesterday that I did take a long off of the swing failure pattern. So yeah, there's nobody that can say I didn't write this because here is the evidence right in front of you. I did take the long yesterday and I am still in this long position. For me, it was a little bit of, you know, a you know, really hot. You know, I've really felt there was a nice potential swing trade. So while we were consolidating at the lows, I didn't just jump in straight away. I waited for some form of an entry trigger. I knew I felt like I wanted a long here. But I didn't want to just randomly long. wasn't just willing to buy for no reason. So as soon as I saw the swing failure pattern, for me, that was a good enough, you know, to have this potential swing trade. Okay. And that really brings us up to, up to where we are up around now. Okay. As you can see, we had a quick move to the upside, filled the uh, inefficiencies that we had off of yesterday's, you know, we could call it a trend day. And we're basically going into another trend day today. So you can see quick move to the upside, second distribution, quick move to the upside. I mean, our third distribution of the day. And obviously we all kind of know, well, I guess if you're in the group, you know, we, we, we're running into this, you know, pretty big level of the, well, not massive, I suppose, but the next level of resistance, which is, you know, coming in at around that $32,000 region, uh, give or take, $200 either side. I, I would make a note of this. You can see I've got my alert set here, but you know, I'd make a note of this $200 either side, you know, $32,000 to 31,800 to 32,200. You know, this, this, you know, I don't think you ever want to look at something as an absolute dollar. Um, you know, there's just no need for this, but we obviously have this bit of a zone of resistance. If, if this flips into support, I mean, of course it looks, it looks pr very strong. We could say, well, not I don't want to get carried away. I don't want people to start FOMOing in because, you know, that's not what I'm about. But I just feel that would show us our first major sign of strength because why am I not getting overly carried away now? We have to think, I mean, even let's be honest, if we rallied to, you know, even if we rallied outside of, outside of the falling wedge, it's still lower high, lower high, lower high. We could still put in a lower high here, for example, and, and fall down again. So it's not like, oh, this is, this is the ultimate bullish thing. This is 100% going higher. You know, of course, if there's one major tip I can give you, it's, it's do not get carried away. You know, do not fall into the narrative that some people will try and push. Uh, you know, we've already seen the comments coming today. Oh, Bitcoin's never going under. You know, this was the last time we saw Bitcoin under $30,000. You know, don't get stuck into those narratives. I, I think you want to approach the market the way I approach the market, to be honest. And that is with an open bias. Okay, so you're open you know, personally, I'm in a long right now, but I, I still do simultaneously have my shorts, by the way, from uh, $41,000. So it's not like I've closed all my shorts because, you know, the way that I trade is, yes, I managed to catch the long yesterday, but I'm still, you know, in that regards, hedged from 41 k And why would I not close that short? Because we haven't actually seen that massive sign of strength yet, have we? Yes, we've had a nice reactions from the low, but we're still under range point of control, we're still under range value area low, we still haven't changed higher term time frame market structure. So that for me is just a, you know, just a sign of, yeah, it's a good long opportunity that we had, but it's, I still don't have to close my short yet. Okay. And I think this is a thing that some people, especially newer traders, they just don't comprehend. They really don't comprehend how, you know, how can this guy hold long and a short at the same time? You know, it's, it's actually fairly simple, <laughs> but of course you need to be getting in your shorts from very good areas of value and longs from very good areas of value. And then you can kind of, you know, gauge the momentum, gauge the strength. And as it stands right now, yes, I'd be more than happy if we could see a, a lovely short squeeze, which we are currently facing at the moment, a short squeeze, you know, punishing late shorts, but we, you know, I'm not getting carried away. That's all I want to stress. I, I still, you know, I'm open and I'm accepting that it's possible. Of course, we can still get another drop here. 
Okay, so what would see what would be those negating factors, I suppose, of where would I close my short and only hold along? Well, of course, I've just kind of given a few of those things away. But breaking the range point of control, getting acceptance into the old range value area low. That would be, I mean, get, at least getting into that old range value area low is pretty important. Let's, let's be honest here. Um, you know, and that would, me, in my opinion, yes, be a, a very nice sign of strength. I mean, changing market structures, that would that would be, you know, if you change market structure, getting out of this falling wedge, you know, we could say that's getting acceptance back above, you know, about 30, 33,001, it's coming in about $33,500. And I know some people are like, oh, Daniel, longing $33,500, you know, I've, I've, uh, you know I, I'm longing really high up the chart. But you have to think, if you if you are taking the long, you're, you're generally thinking your long is for, you know, let's say $40,000, for example, not financial advice. But let's just say that that could be your idea. Well, yes, you've missed the bottom, you know, let's say you've missed the bottom 10%. But then if you're, if you're after a move of, you know, 30% rise, yes, you have to just trade for your level of skill. So if your level of skill is not able to capture very lows, you know, most people aren't going to do that, are they? So you have to trade for your level of skill, what you're trading for at the moment. So yeah, most people aren't going to capture the absolute low. Most people aren't going to capture the absolute high. So if you can get in on, you know, the retests, if you can get in on the areas of value and capture that middle 60 to 80% of the move, you do not need to be the guy that shorts here. You do not need to be the guy that longs here. You just want to get in if this gets a retracement and the retest like, you got the retest here and you're capturing the middle percentage of the move, just like this. Let's just say you short here, you do not need to close here. You could close after the sign of strength and you've still captured the middle, you know, 50% of the move. You're still making money. Yes, you're not making the absolute maximum, but that's the wrong I, I'm, I'm, I'm going on a little bit here. I apologize. But <laughs> that's the wrong mentality to have. Yeah. The wrong mentality to have is I need to squeeze every single dollar out of this market. I need to get rich tomorrow. I have these loans to pay off. I need this money now. Well, that's the wrong mentality. And I've truly feel that is, um, I don't feel it's going to end well for you. But if you end, if you enter this market with the mentality of, I am happy capturing the middle of 50%. I am okay with not getting the absolute maximum, maximum dollar, but I'm content with day on day on day, taking my percent, compounding those gains and seeing that small amount slowly turn to bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger amounts. That's the mindset you want to be in, yeah? And the people that enter this market with the get rich the next day, get rich quick schemes, you know, they're going to fail. In my opinion, that they are going to fail because they have the wrong mentality. People think, you know, people will have the misconception that trading is trading is easy. It doesn't require any time. Well, I think I'm a pretty good example of that's not the case. You know, I'm, I'm still spending a good 12 hours a day every single day on the charts. I mean, do I have to spend that much time? I suppose not. But <laughs> I love what I do. So that kind of doesn't help, I suppose. But I just want to stress it's not as easy as, you know, the picture pictures you might see or think about trading. Anyway, massively off topic here. But all I'm trying to say is you don't need to be capturing absolute highs, absolute lows. You need to get in on areas of value. Um, so, yeah, I've given you a few different things. Obviously, what I'm kind of looking for in in terms of the sign of strength. And I truly feel you know, I've, I've given you those levels. If we manage to get acceptance back into that value area low, of course, we can look up to the point of control up to well, overall the range high, of course, $40,000. But we're, we're not necessarily thinking, oh, it's definitely going to $40,000 because that would be naive. That would be a, you know, a bad method of trading, let's say. The most sensible method of trading is trading at level to level. And obviously in that regard, it's kind of, I wrote this on, I actually wrote this on Twitter. If you're not following on Twitter, Recently, I've, I've changed it around. I'm doing a bit more sensible posting. But um, it's like I wrote on Twitter earlier this morning for people. And this was a game before we had the next move to the upside. Obviously, we were looking for higher at this moment in time. And we knew previous day, value area low is the support. And that is still the case. So like I just, you know, like I wrote, it is very important. We now hold the previous day, value area low as support. Yeah, we smashed through the single prints, we filled the efficiencies, we've completed the 30k liquidity grab, which was also a pretty much a bear trap, you know, got everyone bearish at the lows, funny, funny, funny. And the range continues, but we must hold that support. Okay, so I emphasize this once more time. This is a very, 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 very important support, okay, for myself. 
and I, uh, maybe for you as well <laughs> if you've watched the moment watch my stuff but yes of course this is a very important level of support previous day value year level. we don't want to see that loss i think it's kind of unlikely it's lost today but you can still mark out the level on your charts and <laughs> you know, have an alert set on it for example of okay have the alert previous day value area low i have an alert saying daniel daniel says this level should not well not no, it shouldn't be lost but it's kind of showing us a sign of weakness if we lose the previous day value area low just like it's a sign of strength if we get acceptance into the range uh value area low yeah so yeah I, I, maybe this video has been a little bit high you know maybe it's a little bit confusing if you're a total new trader i kind of get that um but you know this is just the level i'm on i'm, I'm on and i know not everybody's on this but um you know i understand there can be levels of confusion if you want me to really simplify things i don't know just drop it in a comment below say dang we don't want to know all the ins and outs just tell us tell us something i don't know leave your feedback down below i'd be more than happy to read it and what i will say is if you do not understand anything that i'm on about well what a brilliant opportunity i suppose that you have to learn yeah we're giving all the education you get little insights like this. I mean, we're obviously not a signals group. We're primarily for the education, but you know, having these little heads up, having traded a week what I gave on Sunday, one could argue it's pretty much free money right now. But um, you know, what I'll end with is this: we have a contenders live stream tonight, which is part two of two of a live analysis list trading video. And the reason I'm doing a part two is because last week you can read some of the feedbacks here. Lots of people were saying it was the favorite stream they've ever had okay lots of people absolutely loved it really enforcing the concepts <laughs> you know it was basically a live session where we went through um you know bitcoin live and so i'm going to do a part two tonight and then next week we are starting eagle sessions and eagle time so i mean right now is just the most brilliant time in the world to sign up you're getting content that is original and made from chart champions so it's totally you're not going to see it anywhere else and we'll be doing Eagle Sessions next week. And tonight I will be doing, once again, part two of the live analysis. So we'll be going into the Bitcoin chart and I'll be going over my thought processes live where I'm looking for that next setup, okay, based off of the TPO charts. So I basically use the theory, show people how we use this live in the time and you know, how we get a trade off of this. Um, so if you're interested in that live analysis, I'll do that tonight. Oh, I want to I want to wrap this video up, but I'll end with one final thing, and that is the heads up that we have off of the uh, stock market. This has been an absolute gods, godsend. This is the ES. We had the heads up when this started to drop pretty heavily. Okay, a few days ago, this was a massive heads up for the Bitcoin drop. Yeah, ES started to drop first, and the ES started to rise first before Bitcoin. Yeah, Bitcoin followed on after the ES rise. We all know about this correlation. I've known about it for absolute years. But, you know, just to emphasize one more time, I nearly forgot to mention it. Yeah, this, this correlation is insanely good at the moment. And as we can see, I just noticed it as we were dropping a bit on Bitcoin, ES pulling back. And of course, Bitcoin, not the same level, of course, at the moment, but this could potentially equal more of a pullback. Um, yeah, don't forget about that correlation. It's absolutely incredible. That's the ES uh, with Bitcoin. Yeah. I love that correlation and honestly it is extremely valuable. Yeah, that correlation is inval is invaluable, I suppose, in that regards. It's because it really does give heads up on Bitcoin and I absolutely love that correlation. Um yeah, I've loved it for a long time. And right now that is a very correlated asset. So do not forget that, ladies and gentlemen. And I will end by saying if you've liked the video, absolutely smash that like button to a new all-time high. Smash the likes share the video with your friends and family. I am here to provide you the best technical analysis content in the world. We're the most profitable trading co company in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to see more, I've got the live stream for you tonight. Everybody, more than welcome, chartchampions.com. And yeah, I'm looking forward to it. The market's fun at the moment. We're going great volatility. The range, long live the range. It's still ongoing. I've given you my levels that I'm looking for for the next sign of strength and weakness. Okay, so I really hope that's made sense. Drop a comment down below. And um, of course, as always, <laughs> not financial advice. Um, so yeah, you have to just use the levels that I'm giving you to, you know, we will obviously urge you to formulate your own plans. Don't just blindly copy me at the end of the day because... Yeah, my brain's my brain. <laughs> so thank you ever so much, everybody. I honestly hope you've had a brilliant day. I am I am very, 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 very happy. I'm not going to lie. And um, yeah, I hope I can pass all my positive energy and smiles to you in the form of 
of uh, a nice analysis video. So thank you ever so much. Have a good day. That's me finally signing out after just under 20 minutes. Wow. Cheers, everybody. <laughs> Goodbye.